What is the fastest way to level each skill? Well, that's a question that we attempt to answer today. Now, depending on which skill you're actually leveling, it might be a good idea to invest into the respective minion setup. I.e. if you want farming XP, put down farming minions. Mining XP, put down mining minions. You can also put something like a diamond spreading in too. It also goes without saying, if Derpy is the mayor, then you're going to level up quicker considering you have 50% extra skill XP. Now something else to note, of course you can increase the amount of XP you get. If you go over to your skyblock menu and you take a look at your wisdom stats, essentially what this indicates is basically how much XP you're going to get per interaction. The higher this wisdom figure, the more XP you're going to get per interaction when manually grinding. Of course you can increase this figure by pets, reforges, weapons, armor and so on. With the general information out of the way, it's time to get cracking. Just a disclaimer, changes make some methods better than others in Skyblock. Therefore occasionally, for a period of time before changes are made, some methods are way better than others. I also want to say that there may be some better methods that I'm going to list, but these are going to make the most sense to do, and also should be consistently grindable. First of all, we start with foraging. Now it's important to know that regardless of the log that you farm, whether it's dark oak, spruce or whatever you, whatever you actually choose, you're going to gain the same amount of XP per hit. Everybody tends to farm dark oak considering, well, there's the most of it realistically, at the same time there's the most competition. So I'd personally recommend to farm dark oak. It goes without saying you'd use a tree capitator considering it's by far the best axe at the moment before the foraging update. Now to maximise your wisdom, you're going to want to have the toil reforge on the tree capitator. Of course, recombobulating the tree capitator as well is going to enhance the reforge. It's very important when foraging we take advantage of everything that we could potentially have, considering, well, there's not really many factors that affect our wisdom. To get the toil reforge, you need to come to, well, basically the NPC next to the blacksmith. Um, it's going to be the smithmonger, and from there you can buy the toil log. It's going to cost you 990k, and you're going to need mining 25 to apply it. Alternatively, you can get the Moil Reforge if you aren't mining skill level 25. This one's going to cost you 50k, but of course it's going to give you a slightly lesser buff. As for pets, ideally you would have a level 100 Legendary Ocelot. This grants you an extra plus 30 Foraging Wisdom, which is quite a big buff. You're also going to need a level 100 Legendary Monkey Pet. Uh, yes, you need essentially two pets. This might seem a little bit sweaty, but if you want to get the most out of your Foraging XP, then this is the best way to do it. Once you have both pets, you need to create an auto pet rule. The idea is you create a rule when throw a fishing rod, you equip your monkey pet. When gain foraging XP, you equip the ocelot. This is going to mean that basically when you have the ocelot pet on, you're going to be farming the blocks. And when you're basically in between tree, you're going to have the monkey pet on, which is going to reduce the cooldown of the tree capitator, which is going to be maximum efficiency. In terms of armor, there isn't any foraging armor, so you just go for, I guess... The one that gives you the most speed, which is Young Dragon, which increases your speed cap to 500. In terms of manually foraging, that's pretty much it. Alternatively, you could spam purple jerry boxes. Purple jerry boxes have, well, as with every other jerry box, they give you a chance to gain skill XP. If you have a few billion coins and a few days to spare, then go for it. You could probably get foraging 50, and it would be maybe less painful than actually foraging. There is one more method which basically requires you to be on your private island. Uh, you get some jungle saplings, enchanted bone meal, and basically you just place them in a square, press enchanted bone meal with a tree cap, then farm it. Now, supposedly that is going to be quicker. Before we go any further, if you are planning on buying anything from the Hypixel store, don't use cold nitros, but if you use cold nitros, then you can get yourself 5% off. Also, you should subscribe to the channel, there's no reason not to. Become part of the 24%. You should also join the Discord server, it's linked in the description of every single video. Now we're going to move on to combat. There are a few methods that are disputed to be the best, so I'm going to briefly go over all of them. First of all, we have completing tier 5 revenants. Tier 5 revs are very easy to do, and I guess don't really require that much gear. I found that the best setup includes um, some sort of split between Crimson Armor and pretty much anything you want. An Axe of the Shredded, you can either go for one for all if you want to deal more damage, i.e. kill bosses quicker. On the other hand, you can go for a regular enchanted one with Champion 10 on, which gives you more XP per kill. Completely up to you. Of course, to increase combat wisdom, ideally you want quite a high level of the veteran attribute on your armor, and then also your equipment. As I mentioned before, anything that can increase your respective skill wisdom is going to help. If you go to the community store, and then you also go to Abbey Phone Super Shop, go over to Abbey Cases, and then, I think it's the blue cases, if I'm correct. 
Um, as you can see, there is um, different essential talismans that you can buy with bits. Each talisman is going to grant you a different kind of skill wisdom. You can't have these active at the same time, however if you do buy multiple you can switch them out depending on which skill you're trying to level. Anyway in terms of revs the idea then is you just keep grinding them and grinding them. That's how I personally got to combat 60, that's how I level my golden dragon to level 200. I think it's a really good contender and of course at the same time you also have the chance of dropping decent RNGs. Alternatively you can grind ghosts. In terms of the setup you need for grinding ghosts, most people go for at least two pieces of crimson to benefit from the double hit ability. Usually a giant sword or a dark claymore, a giant sword is usually enough. The idea is that you deal 1 million damage per hit so you can grind these ghosts efficiently considering they have a million health. The crimson helps you basically just deal more damage. It's a definitely a very viable method, it can also be a decent money making method with the sorrows that you get from the ghosts, although I find it you know, incredibly boring considering it's the same old, same old, and there isn't really a chance of dropping anything that great. The other method I want to talk to brings us to the Crimson Isles, and to the Magma Boss. If you can grind these blazes efficiently, the flares, then this can also be really good for combat XP. As you can see by the guy teleporting around, the strat is you use a Hyperion, Mage Gear, and then basically just zap them. There isn't really anything else to it, although I will link in the description a full guide to these three methods. It basically just goes a bit more in depth. Anyway, next up we're on the garden and we're talking about farming XP. Now of course what you see here is not a very optimal pumpkin setup. We have one plot and yeah, I've not really uh, changed it at all. I'm not the greatest gardener on my main profile. Now in terms of gaining the most farming XP, it seems like a dual plot pumpkin setup may be the way to go. I assume not everybody is going to agree with this, but it is what it is. You see the issue is one plot isn't fully unlimited. In other words when you get to the end of the plot and go back to the other end, it's not all fully regrown so you're not actually doing it the most efficiently. If you have two plots side by side and essentially connected, you can then basically just avoid that issue. As I mentioned before, your farming wisdom is going to go a long way. Ideally you'd have a pumpkin dice of 3.0 with the Blast Reforged to give you a plus 5 farming wisdom. Of course, if this was then recombobulated, the buff would be 6 rather than 5. Now, the farming armor itself doesn't actually give you wisdom. Of course, it buffs your fortune, but not wisdom. A pet like the Elephant Pet doesn't give you farming wisdom. Neither does the Mushroom Cow. However, the Rabbit does. At level 100, it gives you plus 30 farming wisdom. And then it's just a case of mindlessly chopping pumpkins. Next up, we're going to talk about mining. It goes without saying that manually mining, for the most part, is pretty slow in terms of mining XP. However, when you get to the crystal holes, it starts to heat up a bit. And no, not just from straight up mining gemstones initially. If you can get into a lobby early on, grind commissions and grind nucleus runs, I personally think this may be the best way to get mining XP. Of course, people with maxed out setups, armadillo mining or whatever may argue against me, you know. Majority of people aren't gonna have that setup. And realistically, the gate that you have isn't massively important. It, mor it more relies getting into a lobby fairly early on, mapping out where everything is, setting waypoints, getting your routes together, knowing where everything is to make it way more efficient. It might seem overwhelming at first, but trust me, it gets easier. And of course, you have a chance at getting a drop that was worth over a billion coins in the Divin's Alloy. It's not very probable, however, it could happen. You know, it could. Before I started doing nucleus runs and actually grinding commissions, I found that my mining level was pretty much stagnant. Um, and then when I started doing it, within a day, I got it up maybe three or four times, which is actually kind of cracked. Of course, to actually supplement your mining XP, you don't actually have to have mining minions down. You can just have regular minions with diamond sharing, of course. That's going to accumulate diamonds without even having mining minions and therefore mining XP. I'm not saying this is going to be a game changer in terms of it's going to make you level up you know, to maximum level if you'll excuse the ghast in seconds. Um, however, it's better than nothing. Now it's time to move on to my least favourite skill in the whole entire game. Of course, we're at the pond, so fishing. Now, in terms of maximum fishing XP in um, as little period of time as possible, you, well, realistically, we're not even going to be fishing in water, which in itself is kind of weird. You're going to need to head to the Crimson Isles and find yourself some lava. The best armor that you can use for the most fishing XP is of course Magma Lord. This requires you to have fishing skill level 45 and gives you some pretty nice stats. Of course this is the best for lava fishing 
um, and you're going to gain quite a lot of sea creature chance, which is obviously essential because most of your fishing XP is going to come from killing the sea creatures that you fish up. In terms of pet, you'd like to use something like an ammonite or a flying fish. If you want to get really sweaty, you can set up auto pet rules to equip squid when you actually start to kill a sea creature. In terms of fishing rod, you could use something like a magma rod. Or you know, if you're really that cracked, something like a hellfire rod. In between, there's also the inferno rod. Basically, just whatever you can use. And now we move on to dungeoneering. Now, it'd be easy to say, and it's obvious, that if you could consistently do Master Mode Floor 7s, this would definitely be the best way of gaining Catacombs XP. No questions asked. However, if you can consistently do Master Mode Floor 7s, the likelihood is, well, you're probably going to be Cata 50, if not very, very close. So in that case, what do you do? Well, I would recommend basically doing dungeons for one hour. Do the highest four that you can consistently do, that doesn't take too long, and see how much XP you get. Compare that to a slightly lower floor that you can do easier, or maybe a slightly harder floor that might take you a little bit longer. Depending on, basically, whatever your best in terms of XP per hour is, continue to do that. Now the thing is, this, this calculation is going to be different for everyone. Because everyone's at a completely different stage in the game, everyone's going to be playing with different parties, there's too many variables to say what's best. The same goes for the gear, there's... There's so many possibilities of combinations of gear that you could use and make it work, depending on if you're a tank, mage, berserk, archer, you name it. Unfortunately for this one, you're kind of on your own. So, the skills that I haven't mentioned up to now. Enchanting, carpentry, runecrafting, social, almost forgot about taming. As for taming, realistically, you just need to play the game. It's not really a skill you should focus on. Play the game, do other skills, get different pets, level the pets up, gain taming XP, that's it. As for runecrafting, play the game, kill runic bob mobs, it's not something you should focus, it will just happen anyway. Carpentry, there's um, quite a few different ways you can level carpentry, and essentially all of them just include crafting things. First of all, you need to make sure that you've talked to the carpenter and give him some wool, I believe, otherwise you won't even have the skill unlocked. The way that I got to maximum carpentry level was essentially buying as much enchanted netherwort as possible and crafting it into mutant netherwort. I actually slightly profited from this too, you can do this with many many other things. I would highly recommend waiting until derpy for this, considering you'll have to spend way less money. Which brings me onto a skill that I completely forgot about, which is alchemy, which realistically everyone does during derpy. During derpy about 8, 7 or 8 months ago I put this little contraption together. Consists of a ton of brewing stands, obviously you'll need the materials, there's water here because it's easy just to fill the bottles up as you go. And it's quite self-explanatory, you just brew potions. To cut a long story short, you'll need some nether to actually brew the potions, and then realistically the best in terms of XP will be enchanted sugarcane, and enchanted fermented spider eyes. They're around about the same price, however you, lo you will lose coins if when you actually sell these back to the NPC. If you infuse these potions to make them better, you can sell them back to the NPC and make a much less of a loss. As for enchanting, every single day, do your experiments. It's as simple as that. Of course, you also have the chance of getting some nice drops. You can do these experiments three times a day if you pay levels and bits. You don't need to do that, it will just make it three times quicker. There's not really anything else I can say other than just remember to do your experiments and that's it. Now the last skill, which isn't really a proper skill, is social. Obviously it doesn't count towards your skill average, but it's still a skill. Ways to gain social XP will be like unique visitors to your island, and then just anything within your island in terms of things like parkour, or um, egg hunts, or anything like that. Now, people visit my island quite a lot, and I'm only social 15. If you come over to Christopher, you can see some of the top islands. Of course, if you're on this leaderboard, you're going to have a lot of people visiting your island, therefore a much higher social level. But for those people who don't just have random people visiting them all the time, or there's not really any reason for them to visit your island, how can you get maximum social level or just gain XP? Well, I didn't come up with this idea, it's a pretty evil plan, but I'm just going to go through with it. If you're watching this video, you know who you are, you evil person. Anyway, turns out that, in theory, one of the quickest ways to actually get social XP without basically either being a YouTuber or having like a sort of a unique selling point for people to actually visit your island. If you just get a dungeon party together 
don't go into the dungeon, then just simply do, well, go to your island and P-Warp, then kick them from your island and do this over and over again. In theory, unless you have the same people joining your dungeon party, that's going to count as unique visitors, therefore giving you social XP. Of course, this is more of a joke, don't actually do this, but it would work. But you might be known as the most hated person in the world, which obviously isn't ideal. Now, that pretty much wraps up today's video. In the description, I'll link the more in-depth combat XP guide. And like I said at the start, there's probably potentially more efficient ways of gaining XP that are maybe just a little bit more unknown. Anyway, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.